What up, planet Earth? This is Ian Lenhart. How are you doing? I hope you guys are having a phenomenal day. Uh, I'm out here in San Diego. You can call me Ian. You can call me Len Jones. But know that we are freaking jacked up and excited to share some super important tips that have, you know, both destroyed my career and both, like, took my career off. And I just always hope that putting some value out is going to help someone out there kind of get over that next step in their business and their life. So super fired up that you guys are joining me right now. So for anyone that's watching this live, if anyone that's watching the replay, please just drop where city and state you're coming from. I want to know like where my viewers are coming from because I see all the views and I'm super pumped about all the traffic I've been getting. But I really would like to know like where in the world y'all coming from. So drop it, city, state, country, wherever you're at. Welcome, welcome. So guys, we're going to talk about something that I know I'm super guilty about and I know as a fact that you're guilty of it too because it's human nature. Like it's absolute human nature. And we're talking about the concept of overthinking, right? Overthinking, right? Overthinking is basically when you start thinking about something so freaking much that it suffocates your life and you can't think about anything else. Have you ever been guilty of the fact that like, you need to go do a presentation or you need to go make a sales call or you need to go in for an interview and you're just sitting there thinking about all the bad things that can happen. You're sitting there thinking yourself out of what's actually, you know, the, the simplicity of the action. Like making a phone call is going to change. Like, like you look at your phone, this is a charger, but you look at your phone as if it's just like basically lava and if it touches your ear, you're going to die, right? Like everyone's been guilty of that. We've all been guilty of it. A couple examples that me, I've been very guilty, Joey, Jonathan, thanks for coming on, is one, public speaking. Dang, I've been super guilty of public speaking overthinking. Like, wow. Like when I look back, one of the biggest things I've overthought in my life is public speaking. Another one, pitching products, getting in front of a group of people and pitching them, investors, potential clients and overthinking everything and not performing at your, your 100 level because I'm overthinking it. Dating, hilarious. Bumble Tinder, man. It's freaking hard out there these days. All you get is texts. You ain't even getting on the phone. That's another thing I constantly overthink about. And I know as a fact, all my people do too. Another one, going after A players in your business. You know, that's something I've always overthought in my life. I've been reading this book, The Magic of Think, The Magic of Thinking Big. Phenomenal book. I've actually read it. I'm on my second time reading it because I'm doing this new thing where like I don't really understand books that that well when I first read them. So I read them twice. And he talks about how the only way to combat fear is action. Action, action, action. You can destroy fear literally through taking action. Here's a great example. A lot of physicians actually give harmless, neutral meds to people that insist they need to have something in order to fall asleep. Because it's almost that placebo effect that even though they're injecting or taking a pill that's not actually doing anything to them, it makes them believe in their mind that they're taking something that's going to help them sleep. And it allows people to sleep. It's interesting how the human mind works like that, how we feel like taking action towards something puts us at ease. And it's the same thing with any big decision in your life. So I like to look back at school presentations because I know that's something that everyone can agree with. I remember when I used to have to pitch like in my economics class, like I had to go in front of everyone and, and, and put together this, this whole research paper that truthfully I probably only studied for for like a day or two before and I'm like trying to, try to figure it all out. I knew I had to go first every time. You want to know why? Because two things. If I didn't go first, I'd sit there terrified the entire class that I was just going to screw up. I was going to overthink it or I'd see someone else do it better than me. I'd be like, dang, like that guy's super good. I'm going to suck. I'm going to blow it. So I knew I had to go first. This way I could set a bar and no matter what, the bar hasn't been set yet. So if I can just set a bar, like I'm good, right? Like it's a strategy that I've always took in and I, I think about it. It's kind of impacted my life, like taking Action is such a key. When I think about public speaking, let's circle back to when I'm 20 years old. I got into my first direct sales company. Super amazing experience. Absolutely loved it. Um, but I was forced into a position where I had to pitch a product in front of people. And it was unfreaking comfortable. So, I mean, I remember I'm in a fraternity room with some of my friends, about six people, and we're all getting, we're all getting this idea that we're going to build this business. We're going to make it happen. So I go and I book double meetings at our school library at 5.30 and 7.30, Monday through Friday. And we brought those six people to a room and I stood out in front of those six people. And I remember it like crystal clear. I got in front of them. I had a projector. I had an expo marker. I had this beautiful room and I just started choking. I just started freaking out, like absolutely freaking out to the point where like, 
I was like, what's going on right now? So I would have my boy Pat, I don't know if y'all ever know Pat Murray, give Pat a shout out. I'd be like, yo, Pat, you gotta start talking right now, because if you don't start talking, I'm, I'm gonna lose it. So then Pat would start talking, and then I noticed Pat was, you know, like, also doing the same thing I was doing, so I'm like, alright, alright, bring it back, bring it back. And I did it, and then I felt okay afterwards. I felt like, great, I'm like, sweet, we did it, great. Did the same thing at 7.30, got super nervous. Did the same thing at 5.30 again the next day. Same thing at 7.30, super nervous. Six turned into 20, turned into 40, turned into 50. Before you know it, in six days, I was speaking in front of a room of over 100 people in a crowded ass room, 5.37, UNH library. Like, what is going on? Like, it was nuts. And I realized that I wasn't getting scared. I wasn't getting nervous because I realized that people don't really care about you in particularly. They care about themselves. They care about the value you're giving them. That's what makes a good public speaker a public speaker. But you don't know that because you're always scared that people are going to judge you. But truthfully, like anyone that truly judges you in like a really, really bad way, they shouldn't be in your life anyway. So like screw them, like peace. But another thing that I've been super guilty on is just pitching products. Like in the startup community, getting in front of investors and thinking like, wow, these guys have huge checkbooks and they could change my life. I could change their life. But rather than focusing on my product, I'd get, I'd start overthinking. Like what, you know, maybe am I not dressed up right? Or did I get the first slide right? And since it wasn't natural, I didn't do well. But after going over and over and over and practicing every single time, I got better and made mistakes and it was freaking hilarious how you can get over roadblocks and just make magic happen when you do it. Another thing is dating. These days, everyone freaking screws up dating because it's all texting, right? Bumble, Tinder, right? You have to send certain text messages to someone else and like you overthink the crap out of whether you said the right thing. We all know we've been there because we're trying to communicate through text messages. I know personally I'm the worst, worst texter ever. I'm just, I'm just not good at it. I overthink it. What are they saying? What are they saying? I'm good on the phone. Okay. Like I need to be on the phone or in person. That's just how I operate. So just an FYI, if you're a freaking, you know, if a lady's ever trying to court a Jones, get me on the phone. Otherwise I'm going to blow it. I'm going to blow it every time. So that's just the truth. Another thing is A players. And this is for business minded individuals. How many of you have ever been guilty of trying to avoid the most powerful people in your life to pitch them on your product, to gain their network, to gain their influence, or you just overthink it? I know I've been guilty of that. But it's interesting because the most powerful people in your life, the A players, what we call them, these influencers, they're used to it. They're used to getting pitched. They're used to getting talked to. They're used to getting, they probably have a lot of friends too because of the fact that they're A players. So when you can get over the fact of overthinking that maybe this might be for them versus might not be for them, if you can think, well, what if? Let me just get their opinion. It changes your business and changes the game. Just absolutely changes everything for you. Like it's huge. And I still struggle with it today. Everyone's got what's called their chicken list at work. You have a client that's on your chicken list, right? They're, they're such a big dog. They're such a big freaking, you know, burger that you can't, you're just scared to even try to tackle it because you just think you can't handle it. That burger, I don't know if that made sense, but if it made sense, like word. But the fact is, is everyone has a chicken list. And if you can like overcome the fact that, you know, whether they're going to like it or not, it's going to change your life. And think about this. Imagine you have people on a chicken list and you don't call them, and then someone else in your business or organization calls them, and they end up becoming a huge success story, and you have to live with yourself every single day thereafter. Like, damn, like that would, that is what encourages me to talk to A players, to get what I'm feeling. Like, but guys, seriously, the message here is just send it. Take action. Take action, action, action every time. Just freaking send it. Follow Jerry of the Day on Instagram and just send it. The best way to get moving is to take action, make moves, and actually just start making a difference. And that's what's going to change everything in your life. So guys, if you guys have any value out of this, would appreciate the share. Happy freaking Friday. You know, let's make moves as one, as one team. Let's freaking get it. I hope that you guys get value out of this. And just to recap, overthinking is the fastest way for you to just miss out on opportunities, guys. Action kills fear every single time. Stop overthinking it. If you want to go on Facebook Live, click live. Don't overthink it. If you want to pitch someone, call them. Get on the phone. It's not going to kill you. It's not lava. Just get over the fear and just make the action. Stop dreading it and just take action. Once it's done, you're going to feel a lot, lot better. So with that said, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Ian Lenhart, a.k.a. Len Jones. I appreciate you. Have a phenomenal day. Take care. Peace.